If I had to learn DSA again, I would do it very differently from how I did it the first time. Back then, I wasted a lot of hours trying to do things in random order, switching from one resource to another, changing streaks and sometimes even copying solutions without really understanding them. That made me feel productive, but in reality, I was not moving forward. Today, after years of coding and interviews, I can clearly see what worked, what did not, and how I would approach it if I had to start over. And that is exactly what I want to share with you in this video. So that you don't waste your time like I did. So make sure you stick with me till the end because by the time we are done, you will have a clear roadmap to actually get good at DSA without wasting months like I did. See, a lot of people think DSA is something you can master in a few weeks just by solving a handful of questions. But that is not true. DSA is more like learning how to drive on different kinds of roads. At first, even pressing the accelerator feels confusing. Then slowly, with practice, you stop thinking about each small movement and you just drive naturally. That is how DSA works too. It feels hard in the beginning, but the more you practice, the more comfortable you become. So, I would start with the mindset that this is not a race to finish 500 questions. It is a long-term skill that I need to build steadily. Now let's talk about where to begin. If I had to start again, I would pick just one programming language and stick to it throughout my DSA journey. And trust me, the language does not matter. You can choose C++, Java or Python, whatever you are comfortable with. People waste too much energy debating which one is best. But interviewers don't care about that. They only care if you can solve the problem. If I had to pick again, I would go with a language I know well enough to write code without worrying about syntax every two minutes. That way, my brain can focus on solving the problem, not on remembering semicolons or brackets. Once I have my language decided, the next step I would take is learning the basics of time and space complexity. And no, I do not mean becoming a professor in it. I mean just enough to understand why one solution is faster than another. It's like comparing two different routes to the same place. One may look shorter, but if it has traffic jams at every corner, it might take longer. Complexity is exactly that. Understanding this early would save me a lot of confusion later because I would be able to tell whether my solution is good enough or if I need to think of a better solution. With that foundation ready, I would move to the actual data structures. But here is the mistake I would not repeat. I would not jump into a random problem from random sites. I would follow a structured path. For example, start with arrays, then strings, then linked list, and so on. Each topic builds on the previous one. Back when I started, I used to open lead code and just pick problems at random. And I would get frustrated because they felt too hard. If I had to do it again, I would go topic by topic, starting with easy problems, then medium, then hard. And while doing this, I would remind myself not to just read solutions and move on. This is the biggest trap beginners fall into. When you see a solution, it feels like you have understood it. But the truth is, you have not really learned it, unless you can solve a similar problem without looking. It is like watching someone else play cricket and thinking you can do the same. But the moment you pick up the bat, you realize it's not that simple. So if I had to learn DSA again, every time I looked at a solution, I would force myself to solve two or three similar problems to make sure I have truly understood the idea behind it. Now, let's talk about the resources because this is another area where I messed up badly. Back then, I kept switching between websites, courses and playlists. That only confused me more. If I had to start again, I would pick just one or two solid free resources and stick with them. There are plenty of YouTube playlists that explain topics really well. And I would not waste time hunting for the perfect one. Because the truth is, no single source will solve all your problems. What matters is how consistent you are. I would rather finish one good playlist properly than half watch 10 different ones and remember nothing. Something else I would do differently this time is how I use practice platforms. Earlier, I used to focus too much on numbers, like solving 200 problems in 3 months, just to feel good. But what I learned later is that the number does not matter. What matters is whether I can take a problem I have never seen before and reason through it. 
So instead of chasing streaks or green boxes, I would focus on problem patterns. Almost every problem you see is a variation of some pattern you have already solved, like sliding window, two pointers, binary search, dynamic programming, and so on. If I had to learn again, I would put my energy into recognizing these patterns because once you see the pattern, the problem stops being scary. Another important thing is revision. This is something I completely ignored in my first attempt. I would solve a problem, feel happy, and never look at it again. The problem here is, a week later, I would forget everything and struggle all over again. If I had to do it again, I would maintain a simple note system. Nothing fancy, just a notebook or a digital app where I would write down the key idea behind every tough problem I solved. Then on weekends, I would quickly go through those notes. This way, the concepts would stay fresh in my head and I would not have to relearn the same thing again and again. And here is another mistake I would not repeat, taking long breaks. Back then, whenever I found DSA too difficult, I would stop for weeks and then try to restart. That made things 10 times harder. It's like learning guitar. You cannot practice once a month and expect to improve. Consistency matters more than intensity. So, if I had to learn again, I would practice a little bit every day, even if it was just 30 minutes. That daily touch keeps your brain in the zone and makes DSA feel less scary over time. One thing that helped me later, I, was, I had done earlier, is using tools like ChatGPT smartly. Not for cheating, but for practice. For example, if I did not understand why my solution was slow, I could ask it to explain the complexity in simple words. Back when I started, I did not have this option. But if I had to learn DSA again today, I would definitely use AI as a study buddy to make my learning faster. Let me also talk about the emotional side because this is where most people quit. If I had to start again, I would prepare myself mentally for that fact that in the first three to six months, I will feel like a failure. I will get stuck. I will see solutions I do not understand and I will doubt myself. And that's completely normal. Everyone goes through this. The only difference is some people give up and some people push through. If I had known this earlier, I would not have been so hard on myself. So if I had to learn again, I would remind myself every time I got stuck, this is a part of the process. Getting stuck means I'm learning. Finally, if I had to summarize how I would learn DSA again, it would look like this. Pick one language and stick with it. Learn basic complexity analysis. Follow a structured path for data structures topic by topic. Focus on patterns instead of memorizing solutions. After seeing a solution, solve similar problems to reinforce the concept. Keep your resources limited and consistent. Make simple notes and revise them. Practice regularly without long breaks. Use AI tools for guided practice. And above all, do not give up when it feels impossible because that phase always comes before the breakthrough. If I had done all this the first time, I would have saved myself months of frustration and actually enjoyed the process. Because once DSA starts clicking, it feels like solving puzzles. And it genuinely becomes fun. So if you are starting your journey now, take my advice. Don't change shortcuts. Don't get lost in numbers. And don't doubt yourself when things feel tough. Just keep going step by step. And I promise it will all make sense sooner than you think. If you could relate to what I said, share your thoughts in the comment. Tell me how your DSA journey is going or what struggles you faced. I read every comment.